9,650 pounds, 291 RLTS Jayco Eagle back to us here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. We sold this way back when to its original owner. I think it's had two or three owners since. This was purchased here just last summer or fall, about one year ago, pretty close to today's date at the time of this filming. Um, folks, uh, actually there were several potential interested buyers, one of which was a, a Jayco employee was really taking a look at this, but uh, another consumer beat them to the punch basically. It was owned by a uh, some folks who were like, uh, they were gonna do some traveling nurse type work and they could just never get set up long enough in one place to really justify having this. And they found themselves simply not using the RV as they had expected to. And they said, you know what guys, we tried, it didn't work. Would you mind selling this for us? And we said, absolutely. We do tons of consignment sales here at Halet RV. Now don't let that warp your head. We can still do trades, finance, hitching pieces, parts, and everything else uh, for you here at Halet RV. Overall, RV looks to be in amazing shape. So the folks bought it, updated to a new 4K smart TV, went through, did a full uh, reseal on the entire RV. So it is sealed up, sound as a pound. There are a couple spots before they owned it though that I wanna point out. I don't think they're a major deal, but you deserve to know about them before we get too far along. Know that we will always shoot you straight at Halet RV. There are two little areas back here that uh, show history of previous water penetration, although it looks very historic, it doesn't look current whatsoever. It's easier to see it, like the light's hitting this just right right now, where you can see that there's a little bit of a funky thing going on with the skin here, but anything that I've spotted, you can go through, you can just slap, pound judo chop the crap out of it and it's fine some of this is a result of towing stress some of it is a result of a brief water exposure and you can't see this one on camera at all because of the way the light's hitting it but it looks like at some point there was a little bit of a leak around this thing and this is bubbled out right here but again it's super super solid below now you can see by virtue of the fact that the skin is gleaming and the stickers and decals are not peeled and fading this was uh <coughs> literally choking on thin air <clears throat> pardon me this is not abused this is not neglected something just slipped something just got away but they were on top of it they took care of it and you can obviously see like i said the whole rv has enjoyed a full reseal right now everything is good to go now if this stuff is a disqualifier for you. I'm sorry to hear that naturally, but know that we won't give you the runaround at Halet RV. That being said, uh, if you don't care about a couple little cosmetic things that don't stop you from camping, this is a lot of fifth wheel for the money. Oh yeah, one other thing I forgot. I mentioned how they resealed it, how they put it in a new TV. They also put in all new Goodyear Endurance radial tires. They made this thing road ready. Sadly, they just never used it on the road. Inside of the RV, just like you saw outside on that skin, very clean, well kept. This floor plan, when it came out, was just massively popular. And like everybody and their brother built this. I know that uh, as a Jayco dealer, we had so many of this 291 RLTS Eagle come through. It just wasn't even funny. This is one of the first fifth wheels that was like smaller, quote unquote under 10,000 pounds with a bed slide and opposing living room slides. It was a really big deal when this one came out. You saw this floor plan in Eagle and Cardinal and any major fifth wheel player at the time. The original chairs are gone. You see a couple sort of lightweight Euro rocking uh, swivel glider type jobs there. Uh, the other furniture is still factory original. I love that that flower print there. You can see how they put a little protective uh, blanket on top of it. Uh, RV is, it smells spring fresh because it was packed full of uh, bounce dryer sheets for critter prevention, which is a good thing. All of our windows are gonna open for airflow. They all have day-night privacy shades. I noticed most of the roof vents had something like that Reflectix covering on it to keep the heat out of the camper. But, I mean, overall, this thing looks good. And it also has one of my favorite things historically from the Jayco RV group, and that is this honey oak woodwork. I have always been a sucker for this color pattern. I don't know why. I think it's just because this is the color that RVs were when I was a kid. And you know how your favorite music is still that music you listen in, in high school in like your early 20s, your glory days, if you will? That's the best music that's ever been created, right? Well, this, this was my glory day look of an RV. It just, it takes me back. You know what I mean? Um, so like I said, previous owners put in 
uh, a, uh, a 4K uh, smart TV here, so you've got a, a handy little Roku system in the TV, so if you are uh, able to access mobile data sources, bam, you've got all your Netflix and Hulu and everything else, your Sling TV, all that stuff right there, right available. You've also got just a whole ton of cabinet space, deceptive cabinet space, because look how deep that countertop is. That's how deep those cabinets are going to be. They're going to naturally match. They also did something here that is very difficult to do on a laminated slide wall. They put power outlets right down where you can easily access them. And on that note, right when you walk in the door, you've got this handy little entry bureau. But if that is not screaming for a coffee machine, I don't know what is. Uh, you can see how they stuffed some uh, foam blocks around that TV just for traveling purposes so it wasn't going to bang around anywhere. Ceiling fan giving us some extra good airflow, and even the slide side windows are going to open for breeze. Um, the four chairs here, most of the time you're only going to need two of them. You could easily store two of the chairs in the full pass-through storage that we'll see very soon. But you do see that extension leaf to give you some guest space. Now, the upper deck of this is one of the only areas where it kind of shows its age. Because this was built sort of in a transitional period in the RV business. Where you still had that sort of step up to the bedroom, but you still had a taller uh, middle bathroom deck, effectively. You do have a full privacy accordion wall right here, though. That is a 60 by 80 uh, residential queen, and you can see that's a residential mattress. I don't know if that's a Serta or what, but that's a big, thick pillow top, sucker. Now, up here, you look, and you see there's a controller for, like, a power vent fan, but... Before this RV got back to us the last time, I think that fan had uh, worked itself out, used itself up, burned itself out, whatever you want to say. The controller's still there because it's part of the entire framework, but there is no ceiling vent fan remaining. Um, these classic fifth wheels, this was built before things were washer, dryer, prep, so kind of keep that in mind. But instead, what you have is just a whole truckload of just tons of dresser and additional closet space. Now, uh, this does have that very traditional split bathroom where you've got a private sort of closet style toilet. But one of the things this does is it creates this big open area. It makes, it kind of creates a, an upper deck master suite. And if you're tall like me, you will never have trouble in that shower. Hopping outside into the basement, you can see this is a full side to side to front wide open compartment. And you're looking at this big black bar thing right in front of you, you're going, what is that? That is a stabilizer for the fifth wheel kingpin box up front here. So when you get to your destination, you put that little tripod under that thing and snug it up, and it'll help keep the trailer from being all rocky and rolly, and, and basically, it's kind of the kind of thing that people would tend to do before JT strong arm bracers and more ride stable steps and those things came into the business. It helps the trailer not make you seasick when people come and go or walk around. The uh, slide awnings were added sometime after this was built and purchased. I'm not sure when, but the fact is they're here. This does have an enclosed heated belly insulated package. Um, as long as eagles were laminated, they always had that. Remember, again, we also do have those uh, less than one year old, basically brand new, big Goodyear endurance radials on this thing, giving you that 87 mile an hour rating on the road. We kind of peeked at the back earlier, but I want to take another look at it so you can see how all the windows have been very tinted. Um, I think that was actually added aftermarket. I believe when these Eagles were built, they did not yet have window tint. Another thing that's very easy to miss here is a really cool safety feature. Notice those double tail lights. That was not a factory standard thing. Somebody added a second set of tail lights to just help other drivers on the road know when this rig was stopping to keep them from running into the back of your RV. Coming up here, I mean, you couldn't hope for a roof membrane to be kept much better than this. You can see how they added the uh, the vent covers to our, our ceiling vents above the bedroom, above the uh, the bathroom area here. Uh, the uh, living room, they actually upgraded that vent fan. That is a handheld wireless controller uh, fantastic vent fan that can also be thermostatically activated. So if you set the thing so like, hey, if it gets uh, above 70 in my camper, open that up and start spilling some heat off. You know, it can do that automatically. That is a really cool thing and actually a very expensive thing that was added. Those thermostatic fantastic fans, easily over $500 very quickly. The TV antenna has also been upgraded to be digital as opposed to only analog as everything was when this was first built. 
but the seals, everything, like I said, they went through, resealed everything. This whole RV enjoyed a full peel and seal, and that is a monster project of a job. If you've never done it, count yourself lucky. It ain't a fun thing to do, but the fact is you ain't. Probably, you could, unless you live in sun country, you'd never have to worry about it on this camper. This thing's great, guys. Like I said, there's a couple little cosmetic spots on the rear wall, on the kitchen slide. That's all they are, those cosmetic. So, hopefully you appreciate it. We even get on top of these things and show you around. Uh, normally, we'd have more inventory here, but we're our used inventory is just evaporating. It's about as quickly as we can lift stuff online, it is leaving us. So, if you like what you see here, kind of like the first time this RV was here with us, I would not wait. I would uh, I would call and put a hold on it as you're making arrangements to come see it. And if you don't like what you see, we can always hit the refund button, no sweat. I don't want your deposit. We would like to earn your business. But with the number of people that we serve every day, having somebody first in line on this thing is the only way that we can keep people from throwing fists at one another on a showroom floor sometimes. So uh, short of that, like I said, we don't do dealer fees, but we do hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package, deals, RV delivery, and everything in between. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Beautiful full paint pinnacle. Look at that thing.